Hi, you're here because you've maybe got one of these two or three burning gas cookers, or maybe you don't and you're just interested anyway. Uh, they're typically a pretty cheap item. Uh, this cost me about 80 bucks, attached to your LPG gas bottle, nice and simple for cooking up a meal at camp. But maybe it doesn't perform quite like it used to. That's certainly the case with this one being 10 years old and being that they don't cost a whole lot of money, you might just be tempted to turf it and get another one. But we're not about that wasteful life, okay? We're gonna get this thing performing just like it used to. So this one is the one that was giving me all the trouble. It actually seems to be fine right now, which of course is the way it's gonna go if I have to show somebody. It was actually very slow, you would have noticed. Lit up very slowly, and that's all the way up. It doesn't go quite as high as that one does. So here I've got just a little trigger spray bottle. Uh, oh, it's got a measure on the side. 400 ml of water, doesn't have to be exactly that. Just enough to splash around and Earth Choice Lemon Burst dishwashing liquid. Just gonna make up a soapy bubbly mix and you may as well hang on to the soapy bubbly mix for actually cleaning up the stove because no doubt it's covered in dirty cooking fats and everything. Just give that a little bit of a swish around and we're gonna turn on the gas down at the bottle there and start by spraying some of this mixture around this fitting. We're obviously looking for bubbles. Looks good down here. Now we move to the threaded fitting on the stove. I might just pop this windshield down. Make sure you get this side and in the other side as well. You can also have a bit of a listen. I haven't heard any hissing, I see no bubbles. Also all good. And it's not gonna hurt to get in around the knobs and in the back where the burner tubes connect to either. So hopefully you got no gas leaks. If you do, just take note of where they were. Now we're gonna disconnect the hose. So gas bottle off, just drain the gas out. Only takes a second. I find that removes the pressure from the hose, makes it easier to get the hose off. Now, the hose itself, before this starts leaking, it'll probably get quite cracked. So the way to check for any cracks is to just go through, fold it over like that, just put a bit of pressure on it to make sure no cracks open up. And this one is really good. Uh, check the seals down at both ends. And yeah, little rubber O-ring looks really good on the gas bottle end. And I can see cracks in this one. So we're gonna have to change out the seal. If your entire hose is indeed shagged, and you have to get a new one, just uh, make sure it's got the jet. That there is a primary jet. So keep the old hose and make sure that whatever's in the middle here matches. Because uh, if you get the wrong sort of hose and you don't have this jet here on the new hose, it could completely stuff up your burner and make flame shooters from hell. Well, next thing you can do is remove any splash guard and this thing here. It's pretty easy, they just slide out. Take that away, pop it there for now. And now I'm going to flip the cooker, close it up, flip it. And this is how most of them will work. There'll be a screw for each burner underneath. So unscrew them. All the burners will just lift away. Okay, here's potentially part one of your problem. That's my middle burner. This is the one I was having the most trouble with until all of a sudden it was fine. Um, what happens is the ones that you use the most, they're constantly heating and cooling, expanding and contracting. You can see there's rust on here. But what could be going on is that um, as it's doing that, the rust's all flaking and falling inside the burner. So just give them a bit of a, a, bit of a tap out. There's tiny flakes coming out. I don't think that's my problem in this case. Um, you can also, if they're really bad, you can do like a rust treatment on them. Um, a bit of compressed air and just blow it down there to loosen everything up. Do it on something more substantial than your hand, obviously. I'm gonna get these and 
tap them out on the concrete. So we'll do that for each one. Sometimes you even get bugs nesting in them. Um, so there could be anything from, there's this rumor that earwigs love gas, the smell of gas. So maybe there's earwigs in there. Spiders could have nested in the little tubes. So just clear it out. Make sure you have a good glance over all of these holes. Make sure they're not clogged up because obviously if they're clogged, gas can't flow through them. And this one's looking pretty good. Now my burners are actually pretty greasy, so while they didn't seem clogged up, I'm putting them in some boiling water with a little bit of dishwashing liquid just to break all that down. That's pretty disgusting, so I'm just gonna get some surface spray and a cloth and give all the cabinet a wipe down. It's got some country miles on that. Earth choice, again. Just some surface spray. Now yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? Took me a good bloody hour of scrubbing to get it looking like that. I actually meant to talk about the knobs um, before I cleaned it all up, but if you've got any cracked or broken ones or ones that just spin around on the spindle, look how easy they pop off. You notice there's a flat side on there. Well, if that cracks or strips out, that's quite often the reason why you'll turn the knob, but the gas won't change. And you can get brand new knobs for these things just for a couple of bucks really down at uh, a good camping shop. Blocked or faulty jets are the biggest cause of low flame or no flame or an inconsistent flame or yellow flame. Generally always comes down to the jets. So gotta make sure you clean or replace these. If you've got the right size spanner, use that. I don't have one handy. So just a little adjustable will do. These are only brass, so they're quite soft. So you wanna make sure you get that spanner the perfect size. They shouldn't be too tight. So this is actually the one that I was having trouble with. See how it's got a G stamped on it there? Well, each jet will have a different letter depending on how much gas it lets through that tiny, tiny hole. So make sure you remember which is which. I'm gonna take these three into the kitchen. I'm gonna grab the billy out of the back of the car actually. I'll show you what we'll do in there. Yeah, then you just boil the bilio out of it. Get it? Because it's in a billy. <laughs> yeah, so gas does seem to leave this oily residue over time and that's what seems to clog these things up. And boiling it breaks down that residue. Of course, you want to make sure that all the water comes out of the jet. There's a little gauze in there. I think the gauze is to stop them from surging. And that should fix the problem. You can't stick a piece of wire down there because the holes are too small on these. And uh, if you end up making the hole any bigger, you'll have a massive flame like a meter high. So if boiling them doesn't fix it, go down to a good camping store that does spare parts and you can find all these little jets. Pretty easy and pretty cheap. So now we just put the jets back in, finger tight. They don't need a sealant. There's no seals that go with them. It doesn't need any thread tape or anything. Just finger tight and then use your spanner to just nip it up a little bit. So remember, it is brass, so it's quite soft and easily stripped out. Okay, everything is looking nice and clean. It's time to start reversing the process a bit and then we'll go through how it all works. Okay, let's see what we got. The main burner. Oh, look at that flame. Oh, the uh, temperature control is a lot better. Get right down low. Don't think I could do that before. All right, this is the one I had the problems with. Yeah, that's a bit better. It's about two times the flame it had. And then, oh, very nice. Let's go all three. The Fury, it's pumping out some heat. Let me show you something actually. Um, I'll light this one up. 
So I spoke about these tubes getting blocked up with insects and, and whatnot, and that could be a problem. Well, underneath here is an air intake, which gets you the perfect blend of fuel. And if it gets blocked at all, that's what you end up with. Flamethrowers. There you go. Cool, hey? I came here to show you how to fix one burner that was underperforming. And of course, the one that always gave me trouble seemed perfectly fine today. <laughs> but after all that, I fired this thing up again. And I can't believe how much performance I'd lost across all three burners. It's made a huge difference servicing this thing. So if you've got an old cooker like this that hasn't had any attention for a while, sort of only takes about an hour if you're not filming. It took me about three. <laughs> and um, yeah, give it a brush up. Don't go and just toss it in the trash and think you've got to go and buy another $350 stove. This thing could be perfectly fine. Well, likewise, if you don't have a stove yet, maybe pick up a second-hand cheapie and give it a bit of a refresh. Well worth it. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.